fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. that followed the Civil War, a powerful secret organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up in the western United States. Its members were to be found everywhere, defying the law or using the law for their own purposes, working toward the ultimate goal of revolt and the foundation of a despotic empire. It was the masked rider of the plains who led the fight against this band of outlaws and traitors. And for once, his great strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness were taxed to the utmost in the cause of democracy. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, go after the black arrow. Hello, Silver, away! <laughs> After the Lone Ranger and Tonto had saved a wagon train from destruction at the hands of outlaws in the pay of the Black Arrow, they rode back toward the ravine, hoping to pick up Torlock's trail. Then just as they came in sight of the ravine, someone opened fire on them from a ridge to the east. It was Torlock. The masked man and the Indians started after him. Go on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. There he goes, down the other side of the ridge. Ah, we not see him now. We'll soon be at the top ourselves. In this open country beyond. That right. It's his home trail on the other side of the ridge. You hear that, Tonto? Ah, that plenty cattle. Maybe Black Arrow will steal them. It might be a trail heard on the way to Dodge City. Ah, faster, Silver, faster. Get him up, Scout. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced up the long slope of the ridge, Torlock reined up in the trail crew's camp beyond. <coughs> Bolton. What's the matter? You wouldn't believe me when I told you there were outlaws around. We haven't seen any sign of them. Well, you will in a minute. I just spotted them from the top of the ridge and I opened fire. They came after me and I rode back here to warn you. You hear that, Luke? I sure do. Pass the word along to the boys. Get away from the chuck wagon and grab your rifles, boys. There's going to be trouble. How many are there? Only two, a masked man and an engine, but they're tough hombres. We'll handle them. There, a white horse and a paint. You can see them now. Well, out of range. Yeah, they'll come closer. Tell your men to hold their fire. Hold your fire, boys. They're coming on all right. Never saw such nerve. The trail won't be safe as long as these two are alive. You've got to kill them. Slim, Jerry, get some horses saddled. We're going after them if they try to get away. Now, open fire. Shoot to kill. Quick, Tonto. They cover behind those rocks. You think the man Black Arrow? No, Kimosabe. Tarlock with them. Them shoot at us. Don't forget I'm wearing a mask. He may have told them I'm an outlaw. They'd believe it. Uh -huh. They have nearly 4,000 head of cattle. 
It's an honest trail, crew, Tonto. You aren't taking any chances with the herd. And then right now, come this way. We don't want to use our guns against honest men. No, that'd be plenty bad. But I think Torlock will travel with them as far as Dodge City. We'll trail them and make sure. Uh, come on, Silver. Get them up, Scout. The Lone Ranger was right. Torlock traveled with Jed Fulton and his trail crew as far as Dodge City. But even before the herd had been bedded down, he said goodbye to Fulton and rode into the roaring, booming market town by himself. On past the great meadows where the trail herd were pastured, the stockyards near the railroad tracks, the business section of the town. On into the section where cafes lined both sides of the street, and the building seemed alive with laughter and shouts. Torlock reined up in front of the Lucky Star. Then he pushed his way through the crowd on the sidewalk and in the gambling rooms until he reached a door at the rear of the cafe, the door that led to Al Brent's office. What the... Surprised to see me, Brent? Oh, I didn't know you'd be here so soon. Sit down. Well? I followed orders. I've circulated stories. There's going to be a break in the market. And I've beat the price of steers down $3 a head. That makes it... Twelve. Too much. Well, it's three dollars less than they're paying in Abilene. Jed Fulton brought in four thousand steers this morning. I want that herd for five dollars a head. You're a loco, Torlock. If I were, you wouldn't be taking orders from me. Well, I didn't mean that exactly. But five dollars? There's no way you can get beef for that price unless there was a panic or something. We'll try to arrange one. Huh? Are you going deaf? Well, I heard you, but I couldn't believe my ears. A panic can't be arranged. Not at a time like this with the demand for beef the way it is. Our panic won't last long. Just long enough to get Fulton's herd. That's impossible. A rancher wouldn't drive his cows to market if all he could get was $5 a head. But if the cows were already at the market, he might sell at that price to get rid of them. Are there any army buyers in town? Well, not right now. Uh, good. Who runs a telegraph office? A young fellow called Johnny Day. Honest? Yeah. Didn't you have orders to get one of our men in there? Well, I haven't got around to it yet. Didn't Colby report to you? Yeah, he's here. When I find a way to get rid of Day, I may be able to get him the job. Is there anyone else in town who can handle a telegraph? No. And we won't waste any more time getting rid of Day. Colby's got to be in charge of that office or our plan won't work. I want him in there tomorrow morning. Torlock, how can I it do it? It only takes one bullet. You mean murder? You don't have to do it yourself. In fact, I'd advise against that. Thanks. We don't want to take any chances on the position you've built up here. Cattle buyer... Owner of the Lucky Star. <laughs> Town has to respect you. They won't listen to you. I can find somebody. Do it tonight. Kino. You gonna stick around? Yeah, I'll be here, but I can't show myself much. Well, why not? Nobody knows you. Lone Ranger does. The Lone Ranger is yeah, here. Yeah, we met out on the trail. I convinced Fulton he was an outlaw and his crew tried to capture him. Nothing doing, huh? Of course not. There isn't a horse in the West can keep up with that white stallion he rides. The Lone Ranger don't keep running, Torlock. If he got away, he must have trailed you. He must be somewhere close right now. That's why I'm keeping out of sight. But hadn't we better wait a while before we try anything? Yeah, we're fairly safe in Dodge City. They'll stand for a lot here, but they won't stand for a masked man riding up and down the main street. Well, just the same... I know, I... you don't like it. Well, the leader isn't interested in what you like or don't like. Well, I didn't say that I wouldn't. Well, that's fortunate, Brent. But somehow I never suspected that you'd try to disobey. Well, sure not. Are you going to tell me anything more? Yeah, one thing at a time. The plan is really quite simple. But the first step is entirely up to you. Get rid of Johnny Day. Hi. Hi, Kimosabe. Were you able to keep track of Torlock? Maybe it's hard to lose him. Lose him? Ah. Uh, me follow him to Lucky Star, go inside, see Torlock go in office. Him not come out. Let me think. Now, Brent, who owns the Lucky Star, isn't it? Isn't that right? You're afraid that Torlock may have left by a back door or something like that. Ah. Uh, Did anyone else go in the office while you were there? Ah. Uh, Jed Fulton. That name of rancher Torlock traveled with on trail. He went to see Brent, too? Him want to sell cattle. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, him not do it, though. Taught to hear talk when him come out of office. What did he say? Well, Brent, only give $12 head. Fulton want 15. Him plenty mad. Him not sell for 12. The price had been 15 for a long time. Ah. Uh -huh. And Torlock was in Brent's office before Fulton got there. That's right. There's something up. I can't figure out what it is, but you and I are riding into town tonight. It's plenty dangerous. We've got to, Tonto. Whenever Torlock goes into action, there's bound to be trouble. We've got to stop him. <laughs> It 
was just at sunset that Ann Everett stopped in at the telegraph office with an invitation for young Johnny Day. I, um, I'd like you to come over to our house for supper, Johnny. Oh, gosh, Ann. Well, what's the matter? Oh, I wish I could, but I can't. But why not? Time for you to close up, isn't it? It would be, but the livestock quotations are coming through from Chicago tonight, and I've got to stick around. After I get them, I'll have to write them out so I can post them on the bulletin board first thing tomorrow morning. Oh, that's too bad. Well, c- could I come over after I've finished? Mm, if it isn't too late. Well, it won't be. About 9.30. I'll tell you what. After supper, I'll drop over and see Mrs. Murdoch. That isn't far from here. You can call for me and walk me home. All right, fine. Well, you, you don't have to go just yet, do you? Well, I, I don't want to keep you from your work. Oh, you won't. I, I got a message to send right now. Sit down and listen to it. We'll see if you've forgotten all I've taught you. Of course I have it. Listen. The switch isn't on, Johnny. <laughs> you listen. <laughs> Did you get it? I see. The message was just for me. I should hope. Oh, will you, Ann? Will you marry me? Let me at that key. Oh, sure thing. No. I haven't finished. Not until you've saved enough money for that ranch. You oh, but Ann... They say that two can live as cheaply as one, Johnny, but I don't believe it. You want a ranch, and that comes first. You come first. Besides, I want you to get out of this business just as quickly as you can. Why? It's dangerous. Oh, go on. Oh, it is. What if they were to send you to some office way out in the prairie? You'd be all alone with nothing but, but wild Indians around I'm you. not out on the prairie, though. Sometimes I think Dodge City is even worse. I hate it when you have to work late, Johnny. Why? It's so dark and deserted in this part of town after sunset. There's so many gunmen and outlaws around. Why should they pick on me? I don't have much money here. Sometimes you do. I can see a bag of gold dust in the safe from here. Oh, that shouldn't be open. Then close it. Be careful. <laughs> you know, if you aren't at Mrs. Murdoch's at half past nine sharp... I will I... be, Ann. I... I hope so, Johnny. I hope so. <laughs> As soon as night had fallen, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left their well-hidden camp for Dodge City. They entered the town from the east where all was quiet and reined up in the shadow of a building not far from the single light that marked the telegraph office. We we'll leave Silver and Scout here, Tonto. Uh, and where you go? The Lucky Star. You wear a mask. We aren't going in the front way. Back door, go into Brent's office. Isn't there any way we can get to the second floor without... Kimosabe. Uh, Tonto here. That come from telegraph office. Or somewhere near it. Huh? If it was from the other part of town, I wouldn't pay any attention to a shot. But here it's different. That's right. We better get there fast. <laughs> Come on, Silver. Get him off, town. <laughs> and there's a window open. Oh, man, sit a desk. Either asleep or... Oh, him shot. It's a bad one. Bandage it, Tonto. Oh, Tonto, fix someone. And the safe's open. Oh, somebody shoot and then steal. No, this is gold dust. Hasn't been touched. You think the boy has a chance? Um, maybe so. Let's see what's on his desk here. Nothing important. How are you coming with the bandage? Oh, finish now. We're taking him back to camp, Kimosabe. Here, I'll carry him. Why you do that? I want to question him. It isn't safe here. I'll get mounted and you can lift him up to me. Uh, hey, hold him. Uh, he got him. Hip. Now then, now there. That girl come this way. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Well, Silver, hoy! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. It was Ann Everett who had seen the Lone Ranger and Tonto ride off with Johnny Day. 
Her cries for help brought a hundred men from the cafes, and when they reached the telegraph office... There's something coming through on the telegraph. Colby, you know how to run this outfit, don't you? Sure thing. Then go to work. That message might be important. Right. Oh, what difference does a telegraph make? You can see for yourself John has been shot. That masked man in the engine rode away with him. A masked man in an engine? Yes, I saw them. Johnny was supposed to meet me at Mrs. Murdoch's at 9.30. And it didn't come. I thought something might be wrong, so I came down here. I saw them, I tell you. Must be the same outlaws we met in the trail, boss. Yeah. What's that? Rode a white horse in the paint. Fastest things I ever set eyes on. We haven't got a chance of catching them. You've got to try. What are you standing around here for? You're right, Ann. You stay here, Colby. Take care of the office. The rest of you, get in your saddles and follow me. We'll bring those outlaws back, dead or alive. By the time Brent had rounded up his posse and headed out of town, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had reached their camp. A bed of pine boughs was fixed up for Johnny. And before long, the young telegraph operator opened his eyes. Oh, how are you feeling? All right. I, oh, what happened, anyway? Where am I? You're in our camp outside of town. Outside of... I don't get it. Someone shot you through the window of the telegraph office. And you've got a bad wound in your shoulder. Say, you're wearing a mask. Well, that doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. And <laughs> you look at horse, mask friend ride. Oh, gosh, he's a beauty. Uh, and that horse called Silver... Mask friend, you silver bullet and gun. Engine, you... You trying to tell me this is the Lone Ranger? Not right. The Lone Ranger? Do you have any idea who it was that shot you? But, no, I, I don't. Might have been somebody after the gold in the office. And the safe wasn't touched. Of course, Tonto and I got there as fast as we could after we heard the shot. But somehow, I don't believe that robbery was a motive. I can't figure it out at all. Weren't you... Well, weren't you working later than usual tonight? Yeah. I was waiting for the livestock quotations to come through from Chicago. They they were just starting when... Well, that's all I remember. Do you know Al Brent? Oh, sure. Did you have much to do with him? Oh, nothing at all. I stayed clear of the lucky star. You see, I was saving my money to get married and... Oh, golly. What's the matter? I was supposed to meet my girl at 9.30. I've got to get back to town. You'll have to stay where you are for a day or two. But I can't. Anne doesn't know what's happened to me. I... Well, what's your name? Johnny Day. Well, Johnny, I don't think you'd be safe in town. If you want to write a note, you'll see that Anne gets it. You can make her understand that you're all right. Maybe that girl we see right off. It might be, Kimosabe. I have a pencil and some paper here, and if you feel strong enough to try oh, sure, it... sure, sure, I can write my left shoulder that's hurt. And just tell us where Ann lives. Well, it's two blocks north of the telegraph office. Just just a little cottage painted white. There's a big cottonwood out in front. Oh, Tonto find that easy. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'd better say that she isn't to tell anybody where I am. Yes, Johnny. You'd better. They've tried to kill you once and they may try again. <laughs> He had not returned when Tonto circled back to town by the back trails. He avoided the main street and reined up in front of Ann Everett's home. <coughs> uh, light and wind. Who's there? A Tonto bring message. An engine? And that's the painter. Uh, you, you read this. What have you done with Johnny? Do not talk so loud. Read note. Him write it. Then he's alive? Uh. But, but this writing, it isn't the way he usually writes. It's plenty hard. Him hurt... The Lone Ranger? It says that masked man was a Lone Ranger. Ah. But why can't I tell anybody where he is? It's not safe. Then you've got to take me to him. Uh, time to do that. I'll be ready in five minutes. My horse is out and back. Will you get it saddled? Ah, you hurry. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Why you stop? Look back there by the telegraph office. Oh, posse come back. Not find camp. But what are they so excited about? It may be good time to find out. You can't get any closer to him. They put you in jail. Mask friend, him want to know. Then you leave it to me. I'll find out and I'll meet you outside of town near the camp. Ah. Get up there, Red. My fault. 
What are you yelling at me for? Oh, That's right, men. Stand back. Well, it can't be. There must be a mistake. There's no mistake. Those figures I put on the bulletin board are just what I got from Chicago. The cattle market's busted wide open. Seven dollars a head. Seven dollars a head in Chicago means five in Dodge City. It's robbery. You should have sold this morning for 12, Fulton. There's something crooked about this, I tell you. Do you think I like it? I still got a thousand head on my hands that I paid 15 for. And I'm not so sure I want any more even at five. Colby, I ought to skin you alive. You keep your hands off me. That's right, Fulton. Don't make a move. A gun. Yes, a gun. Lock up, Colby. I'll see you get back to the Lucky Star safe. Right. It's a crooked deal. This means the end of ranching in the West. It's bad luck for all of us. I'll grant you that. Oh, come on down to the cafe and I'll buy a drink. Not me. I'm going out to my camp. I wouldn't touch your poison. And as for selling for five dollars a head... What else can we do, boss? The cows are here. You'd better make up your mind fast or you won't even get five. Now, come on, boys. Oh, oh, Red. Johnny. Oh, hello, Red. You shouldn't have come out here. You think I could have stayed away when I knew you were hurt? It's only my shoulder. Mask man, you'll tell me the truth. You'll be all right. Did they send a posse after us? It's back in town now. And there's some big news, Johnny. Cattle's down to seven dollars a head in Chicago. Oh, I don't believe it's it. It's true. That man Colby got over the wire. Brent's cut his price to five. Wait and, a minute. And I heard him tell Fulton that if he didn't sell his herd fast, he might cut it even more. Johnny, why don't you believe it? Well, it, it's possible, but I was talking back and forth with Chicago, waiting for the prices and... If there was some big news like that, Joe would have mentioned it. He'd have had some idea before the final quotations came through. Well, that's a drop of $13 a head. You were talking with Chicago just before you were shot? Sure. I'm beginning to get the answer to a lot of things. No wonder they wanted you out of the way, Johnny. Who? Brent and Colby and Torlock. I never heard of anybody by that It name. doesn't matter. With their own man in that telegraph office, they could set their own prices for Dodge City and... Tell me this, Johnny... Is there anyone else in town who's an operator? No. I was the only one until Colby showed up. Well, you're in no condition for a job like this. What about me? You? That's right. I've taught Ann everything there is to know about the office. You could get a message through to Chicago. You understand the code of and... Of course. Well, what's the idea? What do you want to do that for? To check on the truth of this report. Is there anyone at the office now? No. Colby locked it up. And you and I are going to town before it gets light. Tonto, where's Fulton? He's out at his camp. You know where that is, Kimosabe. Find him and bring him to the office. Tell him to round up his whole crew first. Ah. Here, Silver. I'll help you into the saddle, Ann. Steady, Red. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Come on, Silver. Get up there. What's the matter? I was walking over the hotel and saw a light way down the street. What about it? I think it was a telegraph office. So why didn't you put out the lamp? I did. There's something wrong. Who'd want to go in there tonight? I got an answer for that, and I don't like it. Huh? Never mind. Get the boys together. A posse? Our boys. I'll meet them outside in five minutes. Kino. There. I managed to wake him up. What shall I say? Just tell them about the report that's posted outside on the bulletin board. Ask them if it's true or not. All right. Listen. Sounds like someone's coming. There's no doubt about it. They aren't writing, so it can't be Tonto or Jed Fulton. Can you do without this light? I suppose so, but they must have seen it by now. If you don't mind. Where are you going? There aren't any windows in the back. I'm going to keep them away from the front. There. Now all we have to do is wait for their answer. That looks like Brent. It is. Here it comes. You don't have to sit there to listen. Get down on the floor. Why? Get down. Brent had caught a glimpse of the masked man at the window and ordered his men to open fire. But the Lone Ranger kept them at a distance and finally drove them to the cover of the buildings across the street. What are you getting? I'm still $20 a head. That's all we need. This was all a scheme to get Fulton's herd. Indications of a continued rising market. It's all right. Here comes Tonto and Fulton's trail crew. Stay under that desk until the shooting stops. Hi! They're on the other side of the street. Run them up. The 
cowboys followed Tonto's lead and drove Brent's men from their cover. Without horses, it was impossible for them to escape. And in five minutes, the roundup was completed. What's the meaning of this, Fulton? You don't have to be told. There was an outlaw in that office. We were trying to smoke him out. That was a lone ranger. And here he comes now. Well, masked man, what'd you find out? Anne can tell you that. The Chicago price for beef is $20 a head. It was a trick. Yeah. You can take the whole gang down to the sheriff. And charge him with murder. They killed Johnny to get him out of the way. I so didn't have nothing to do with that. Shut up. It was Joe and Pete. I heard Brent giving their orders. That puts the rope around all their necks. Not quite, Fulton. You see, Johnny's still alive. But as for this man... Hey, let go my wrist. Just as I thought, a black arrow. Tell the sheriff to hold this man until a United States Marshal picks him up. What's that? Where's Torlock, Brent? <laughs> He's got a 12-hour start on you, masked man. You'll be able to handle this crew, won't you, Fulton? Just leave it to me and the boys. And Tunnel and I'll be on our way. Come on, Silver. Get him uptown. Oh, Silver. Silver. You head west, Kimasabi. Yes, Tano. We know the headquarters of the Black Girls in the mountains. There aren't any mountains to the east. You look. What is it? Their horse. Him wear saddle, but no one ride him. Alone on the plains. Let's see what this means. Here, good boy. It's an army horse, Tano. Saddled and ready to ride. And he's wandered a long way. Kimasabi, their papers stick in saddlebags. Yes. And what to say? Just one word, Tonto. Just one word. Help. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.